What was your branch of service? Uh, I was at the Chaplain Corps of the United States Navy. What was your highest rank? Uh, I retired as a captain. And what were some of the general locations that you served? And, well, <clears throat> I went to chaplain school in 1967. After graduating from there, my first uh, duty assignment was in Japan with the mobile support unit, Beach Aspen Charlie. And I was there for a year and a half. And then my next uh, assignment was with the 1st Marine Division in Vietnam. I was there from February of uh, 69 to February of 70. Uh, after serving there, I went to the Naval Station in Brooklyn, New York. And uh, I was there until 1972. And then in uh, August of 72, I was sent to the uh, Fleet Support Office in Athens, Greece. And I was there for uh, two years. Uh, after leaving uh, Athens, I was assigned to the uh, uh, submarine base into London, Connecticut, and I was there for three years. Uh, from there, I went to the USS Saratoga, which was homeported in Mayport, Florida, and I was on there for two and a half years. And then I went to uh, the senior uh, course for chaplains at um, the chaplain school in Newport, Rhode Island for a year. And after that, I was assigned to the Coast Guard Academy in New London, and I was there for three years. Uh, from there, I went to uh, the, um, the schools command in um, Great Lakes, Illinois, and I was the uh, head chaplain uh, uh, for the uh, boot camp side. Uh, I was there uh, for, uh, uh, let me see, uh, three years. And from there, I went to um, the Merchant Marine Academy in Long Island. And I was there for three years, and then I uh, f finished up at the Naval uh, Station in Rota, Spain. And I was there for two years. I left there and went back to, uh, to uh, the submarine base uh, where I was retired in August of 1990. Now, did, now, this is different than a servicemen, so you were already going into the priesthood and then you decided to enlist in the Navy, or? Yes, I, I was ordained in 1958 and I went in the Navy in 1967. So I was a, a priest for nine years. Okay. Yeah. Um, what, um, what made you decide to enlist? Well, you know, you, you wouldn't remember, but uh, <clears throat> about 1965, there was a great um, rebellion, uh, but that's not the correct word, the, the resistance to the war in Vietnam. Uh, you know, uh, people were laying down in front of troop trains and uh, case, causing mayhem at uh, naval stations or uh, military stations. Uh, so I said to the Archbishop, I, you know, I think we're doing the right thing over in Vietnam and I'd really like to go. And he said, well, when I can let you go, I will. And um, two years later, he let me go. But basically, I thought we were doing the right thing for the right reason. Okay. Um, so since you're already ordained a priest, was there special training you did to become a naval chaplain? Yes, the uh, Navy at that time had a uh, chaplain school up in Newport, Rhode Island, and it was a, an eight-week course. Uh, um, doctors, nurses, lawyers, chaplains, people who were getting a direct commission, who didn't go to an academy or OCS, were, were sent there uh, basically to uh, become indoctrinated into the Navy. Uh, so, as I say, it was an eight-weeks course. Uh, what was some of your training like? Uh, we had uh, physical training, of course, uh, but uh, we had uh, naval history, naval customs and traditions, um, a familiarization with other branches of service because the rate, rate the uh, officer structure, well, enlisted in office and structure uh, have different but they they wear the same emblems, but they mean different things. And so we got familiarization with the Army, Air Force, Marine Corps, and the like of that. And um, 
uh, we were uh, 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 taken uh, in, um, uh, to the, uh, the ships that were still home ported in Rhode Island at that time to become familiar with them. We went to the Naval Air Station at, uh, at uh, Otis uh, Air Force Base. We went up to the shipbuilding uh, facility in Bath, Maine. Uh, just to get a, a, an idea of, of um, what life might be like. Okay. Um, do you recall the date that you went into boot or training? The date? Yeah. yeah. Uh, April 23rd, 1967. Um, do you remember what was going through your mind? Uh... <laughs> And really, I was, uh, of course, excited. Uh, my father had been in the Army. My oldest brother had been in the Army. My other brother had been in the Air Force. So, uh, you know, well, my, my three brothers were all, all in the service. So <laughs> they were surprised when I went in. But, uh, uh, you know, I, I was looking forward to it and, and was not disappointed. Mm -hmm. um, so from that general familiarization after that, uh, where did you, did you go right to Vietnam? No, I went to uh, Yokosuka, Japan. Um, I was uh, part of a, uh, a, a group of chaplains called Circuit Riders. Uh, there was myself uh, and... Uh, one other Catholic priest, and there were uh, uh, three uh, Protestant chaplains. And uh, our, our group chaplain was in Subic Bay, and he would uh, assign us to different um, ships to ride on. So in, in 18 months, I was on 31 ships, but they were all non-combatant ships, supply ships, uh, food stores, yeah. Oilers, ammunition ships, the, the, the ships that were supplying the ships on the line. Okay. So that was interesting because I had transferred by helicopter and by wire high, not by Manila High Line, and in some cases just cross decking. Okay. Um, did you get to explore Japan at all while over there? Uh, not really. Uh, I spent about 75% of my time away from Japan. Okay. Yeah. Uh, there were uh, a couple of times, well, I got up to uh, Tokyo uh, a couple of times, and uh, one time I was assigned to the Admiral's uh, ship, which was in, in Sasebo. So I went, uh, flew from uh, Yokosuka down to Sasebo and spent a couple of weeks on board the um, flagship. <clears throat> okay. Um, so then from Japan, you went into Vietnam. Correct. Um, can you tell me what that was like, that transition? Well, uh, in, in between the, the, the two duty stations, of course, I had uh, leave, and then I went to Camp Pendleton for uh, two weeks of uh, orientation toward the Marine Corps. And uh, from there, uh, I was flown to uh, Okinawa to await transfer over into uh, Vietnam. Um, because it's significantly different from being on a ship, being on the land, and very different between being with the Navy and being with the Marine Corps. Uh, but the Marine Corps uh, treat their chaplains very well. And, and uh, they were uh, very solicitous. Uh, uh, of me, and uh, I was assigned to the 11th Marines, which is a um, an artillery uh, regiment. Uh, so uh, my first three months were uh, just outside of Da Nang, uh, and uh, from there I would go to different cantonments around uh, the uh, uh, Da Nang area. And then I was transferred down to Anhua, which is 25 miles south of um, Da Nang, in support of the 5th Marines there. 
<clears throat> and a, a couple of days a week, I would go out to uh, the, the line companies, go out one day, spend uh, a day with two companies, and then two, the next uh, day with two other companies, and then fly back to uh, Anhua. And, um, you know, they were always happy to see a chaplain. Um, the, the very last night that I was out there, the, the colonel said to me, uh, Chaplain, uh, where's your uh, foxhole? I said, it's right here, sir. And he said, you're not going to stay there. You're going to come next to me. He said, we're going to get hit tonight, and I don't want you to get hurt. <laughs> said, I've been here for six months, and no company that I've been with has ever been hit. He said, well, your luck ran out. It didn't run out. <laughs> Thank God. Um, uh, but, uh, uh, you know, Vietnam, you're, you're either wet because you're sweating or you're wet because it's raining. And uh, I have to say that the uh, interaction with the Marines and, and the Vietnamese uh, that we worked with was, was very beautiful. Uh, I have some pictures I'll show you later. Of, uh, my last three months was uh, at the... Um, Charlie Med, uh, Med, it's a medical, mobile medical hospital, okay, uh, <clears throat> and um, the uh, uh, one day, well, a, a couple of days a week, the doctors, nurses, uh, uh, corps men, myself, would uh, go out to a uh, an orphanage where the where they took care of the uh, the children, and. Uh, <clears throat> At Christmas time, uh, the sister said, we would like to repay your kindness. The children would like to come and entertain your uh, uh, patients at the hospital. So they had, you know, from uh, five years old all the way up to 17. A at 17, they had to leave. That was the oldest they could stay there. <clears throat> and they, they, they came in and they, they sang in Vietnamese and French and then in English. And then they did some uh, native dances and went from one ward to another ward to another ward. Uh, so it was re really very nice, the um, uh, nice interaction between us and them. Right. Um, <coughs> did, did you see any combat over there? Uh, not up close. <coughs> uh, like I said, you know, two days a week I would go out into the line companies and by the grace of God, we were never in a firefight when I was with them. But the one time when we were out there, I, where we were, uh, I could see our, I actually could see our cantonment. And I was with the forward observer who was calling for artillery. So <clears throat> you could see what they were heading, what, the, what they were shooting at. But we could, I could hear the, the directions being sent in, I could see the guns being uh, laid on, and then I could see the, the, um, <coughs> the artillery coming in. <coughs> That's the closest I got. Okay. Thank God. <laughs> um, so what, what was it like being there unarmed? Well, uh, I, I was assigned a, a, um, a Marine to, uh, as my guy, my okay my um, custodian <clears throat> and and uh, there, there were a couple of times when we were shot at uh, I, 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 I have to say at the time I did not realize that we were being shot at <laughs> but uh, after we got back to our cantonment the uh, marine who was driving me said that was close chaplain they were shooting at us <laughs> I said well I thought this was for bees <laughs> uh, and uh, one night at the um, and uh, Hill 55 outside of Da Nang, um, the uh, alarm went off, and I went to the base aid station, which is where my duty uh, uh, went uh, under um, emergency conditions. And uh, we were sitting on top of the uh, <clears throat> uh, base aid station, and the, the shells were hitting outside of us. And I said to the Marine, <laughs> that I was with, and boy, our guys are really on tonight. They're right outside. He said, Chaplain, those are not ours. Those are theirs, <laughs> and they're bad. <laughs> Thank God. You know, nothing came in. They, they were they shot sh uh, short of us. Okay. But that, that, that's as close as I got to uh, any firefight. <clears throat> um, when you were there, where would you have 
have to stay to sleep. Oh, um, in, in in both places, uh, on, on Hill 5-5, five five, I was in um, what they call the Southeast Asian hut, which was uh, uh, plywood up to about halfway up, and then screens the rest of the way up, and a metal roof. <coughs> Excuse me. And I w was in uh, with uh, three other officers, and when I got down to Anma, they, they built a uh, a special place for me, where I slept alone. <clears throat> so then, um, what was it like working with the hospital with the injured? Well, uh, again, uh, you know, this is the grace of God. When when I was there, we we had we took um, mass casualties only once. You know, the rest of the time it was people being brought in from the field, and they would they wouldn't stay very long. They had discovered um, uh, back in the Second World War, the, the quicker you got a man, an in, injured man, off the field into a, a base aid station, the, the greater was the the probability of survival. Okay, and uh, and and pretty much <clears throat> as soon as somebody was hit, they were medevac right out. So they would come in to us, so they would be you know, um, stabilized and then uh, sent either to Guam or to Japan and then back home. You know, I have to say that the, uh, the doctors and the corpsmen were very, very professional. Uh, and and uh, <clears throat> the, the one night we did have um, mass casualty, it was a 15. Uh, they, they were all met, uh, Marines on a truck, and the truck hit a bomb, uh, a bomb, uh, you know, um, uh, <clears throat> uh, what they called it, a surprised explosive device. Uh, and uh, <clears throat> they, they were brought in, and the, the doctor and I went, went through them. <clears throat> and very quickly, they were out of the triage station. And those that needed operating right to the operating room. Those that didn't need it went to the to the wards. <clears throat> so uh, you know the the doctors are uh, really really fine men. <clears throat> when uh, um, when I was at uh, Charlie Med, uh, myself and the, and the other chaplain were in a, a, a hut with you know four other doctors and. Uh, um, was uh, you know everybody is very professional. Um, how many chaplains were there per unit, or how would they set you up with, like that? Um, uh, if I can recall it correctly now. Uh, You see, um, I think every uh, company, not every company, didn't. yeah, I guess every company had a had a chaplain assigned to it. Okay. There was was a regimental chaplain who was on the regimental staff, but then uh, I think a, each of the, uh, the of the companies had a uh, uh, a chaplain assigned. What would a, a typical day be like for you? <clears throat> well, everybody got up at Reveille and uh, had breakfast. Um, generally, uh, if there were any uh, Red Cross messages to be delivered, uh, we would uh, deliver them right after uh, breakfast. Uh, at noon, we'd schedule mass. And then in the afternoon, generally, uh, we'd go out and visit the outlying areas. So, um, they were busy days. So you would go out and assist the Red Cross in delivering the messages? Well, the, the Red Cross, uh, any emergency back home had to be verified by the Red Cross, and then they would transmit a, a, a message uh, to the relative command, and 
<clears throat> generally the, the chaplain was the one who delivered the news. Okay. Um, do you remember um, your last days in Vietnam? Oh, last day in Vietnam. Where was I? I was at Charlie Med, yeah. <clears throat> As a matter of fact, yes. Um, just a, a couple of days before that, the ammunition dump at uh, Da Nang blew up. And uh, where the... Uh, um, the uh, barracks for the people coming in country and leaving country was right next to where the um, base exchange was. Okay, they were on one side of the mountain. The, uh, the uh, <coughs> uh, ammunition dump was on the other side, and it blew up. But the, the the waves from the explosion came across the the mountain down and flattened everything on the other side. <laughs> And I, I heard one uh, Marine say, oh, no, not my last night in country. So that was our last night in country. Uh, but the last day was, was just simply turning over to the next man. Okay. Yeah. Um, and then from Vietnam, you went to Brooklyn, New York? Brooklyn, New York, yes. And the naval station there was processing men at the rate of 1,000 a month, people coming in or people going out, and, and <clears throat> that, that the shipyard had already shot, shot down. So, um, Naval Station Brooklyn was simply a processing place by that time. And there, there was a brig there, it never had more than, I don't know, 20 or 30 men at a time, because again, if, if anybody was was going to be in, in the brig for a long time, they they were shipped out. The Marines went down to Carolina, and uh, the Navy. I don't know where the Navy went. Hmm. Um, <clears throat> and then you went to Greece following that, right? The uh, Navy was was experimenting at that time with forward deployment. <clears throat> So there were six uh, destroyers stationed at, um, in Greece at Alepsis, and our office was to support the family and to support the, the ships. Okay. Can you tell me a little, bit, a little bit about your time in Greece? Well, that was a very nice time <clears throat> uh, you know, to be at the, at the um, birthplace of uh, Western culture was, was wonderful. But they, uh, I was with a very experienced senior chaplain at that time, and um, <clears throat> our role, the, the role of our of the police support office, was to help the, the dependents who came over to be integrated into the community. So uh, there were cultural lessons for them. Um, the Navy supplied teachers to teach them Greek if they wanted to learn. Uh, the uh, um, recreation de department set up tours for the people uh, and uh, the like of that. Um, so, but myself and the other chaplain were doing mostly was uh, family counseling at that time to help the people integrate, um, to get used to the fact that, that the ships are going to be out at sea, they're not always going to be in port. And um, to help them, uh, especially the women, because the Greek men typically did not do business with women. So if a woman called a plumber, he would say, where's your husband? And she'd say, he's out at sea. He would leave. He wouldn't do anything. Um, so that, that was very hard on them. <coughs> Their own ships worked worked out a system for them to take care of that. They always left somebody behind who was the surrogate husband. <laughs> so, but, um, it, you know, a, a typical, every time the man went to see, something would break in the house. And as soon as you come back, everything is wonderful. <laughs> but, um, it, um, 
You know, and then because we, we set up uh, uh, religious services for them. Uh, while we were over there, we did have a couple of emergencies where people got killed, which was, was, was hard uh, on the families. Um, but uh, by and large, it was wonderful. And, and most people uh, a adapted very well. Um, surprisingly, some did not. Uh, it, 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 I, it, we, we saw the young women adapted wonderfully. Those in the middle, not so good. And then the elder people adapted wonderfully. It was just at 40 years old, somewhere around there. <clears throat> but uh, their, their, their big thing, of course, was getting, finding a place to live and getting settled down. And, and um, uh, we found out that uh, when the dust all settled, half of them were up north of Athens, the other half were south of it. <laughs> very, few of, very few of us lived in the city of Athens. Oh, okay. um, and then you went to New London? Yes. How was that submarine-based? Uh, I have to say, uh, that saved my career. It was, uh, by this time, uh, I had been in, see, um, when in, in 67, I was there in 74. So I, I was really uh, thinking about getting out. <clears throat> and uh, I, I talked to several senior priests in the Navy and said, if, if I stay in the Navy for over 20 years, how many uh, places can I expect where it would be like a real parish? And they said, if you're lucky, two. So, a sub base in London was the first one. <clears throat> uh, I, while I was there, I had three senior chaplains. The, the first one was sent out to um, South Carolina. The second one was sent to Virginia. And then the third one was there when I left. So in the, in the three years, I had three seniors. <clears throat> there were, uh, and the senior there was a chap was a Catholic. So there were two of two Catholics there and uh, four Protestant chaplains. Uh, but it, uh, we, it, it was like being in a parish again. We had baptisms, we had weddings, we had funerals, we had religious education, we had retreats. It, it had uh, uh, <clears throat> four masses on a weekend. Uh, but then we had all, all the other things to, to go on to, you know, delivering um, Red Cross messages or collecting information to send it to the Red Cross to send out, kind of all that kind of stuff. But, um, <clears throat> the, uh, we had, uh, we had uh, 500 kids in our religious education program. And, and while I was there, I was working with, with the uh, civilian community too with a, a program called Marriage Encounter, uh, which is with, uh, to build strong families <clears throat> and uh, uh, that, that was a wonderful interaction between the, the civilian community and the Navy community. Uh, um, and, and of course, it was very nice being back in Connecticut at that time. <clears throat> uh, my mother was alone. Her, her sister was in the hospital. My two old brothers were in the hospital. <laughs> so <clears throat> I could get, get up once a week and and uh, help her. Okay. Um, and then from there, you went to the USS Saratoga. Saratoga, yeah. There was a uh, that was the first of the super carriers. It was CV sixty. Uh, we had thirty five hundred men assigned to the ship, and when the when air wing came aboard, that was another eighteen hundred. So when we go out to sea, we have about fifty three hundred people on board. Um, <clears throat> the uh, the captain said to us one day, he called all the, the captain was leaving, okay? He called all the officers and he said, if you want to know how you got on this ship, I'm going to tell you, I asked for you. <laughs> so thank you very much. Nice to be asked for. <clears throat> but very, very uh, professional people, highly skilled, very motivated. Uh, the, the first year I was on there, out of a possible... Uh, 
20 awards that a, a carrier can receive. Saratoga received 17. And uh, the most prestigious was the uh, Admiral Flatley Award for safety. Got it. <laughs> yeah, so, <clears throat> uh, yeah, the, the, uh, every, everybody on board, you know, really worked hard at their job, enlisted in an officer. Uh, uh, one of my, well, two of my duties, extra duties, additional duty, uh, was to run tours when we were in foreign ports, and the other was to take care of the library. We had a, a fairly good library, and it got a lot of use by the guys. The uh, uh, running the tours, of course, was was very educational for me and for for the for the men. And we operated as many tours as we could in each port that we went into. The uh, day to day, again, you know, right after breakfast, Red Cross messages, <clears throat> and uh, because I had mass every day. Uh, we, we had a, a, little, a little chapel that um, would hold maybe about 10 people for daily mass. And then on, on the weekend in port, we would have mass in the library. And we, uh, when we were at sea, we'd have mass on the, um, in the forecastle. Uh, the, uh, the, the second deployment that we had, the, the, the ship uh, put into Palermo for... Um, two weeks uh, upkeep, and the uh, cardinal uh, asked to come aboard. Now, <clears throat> that all happened before I, I was home on emergency leave. I went back to find out that the cardinal was coming on board and he wanted to say mass. I said, okay, we, we can handle that. <laughs> um, and so, uh, uh, as a matter of fact, the, the mass was on February 2nd, Candlemas Day. And uh, there was a very good attendance. Uh, I, I was very happy. Uh, the, even the admiral came, the captain came. And uh, afterwards, you know, they, they greeted him. And, and <clears throat> uh, I asked him, did he want a, a tour of the ship? And uh, his interpreter said, the cardinal has a cold. He'd like to see a little bit, but... Not too much, <laughs> okay. <clears throat> so we, we gave him a, a, a tour of just of the uh, hangar bay uh, and the, the flight deck. But, uh, the, uh, the Saratoga was a good ship. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, now, where would you have stayed on uh, the ship? Uh, the uh, by that time I was the lieutenant commander, and so I, I was with the uh, berth uh, on the, uh, the what would be the, uh, the the second deck where the um, mess was and the, and the library and other things like that. <clears throat> and but I was right right uh, in midships. Um, now with the other denominations, how did you guys work out chapel space? Yeah, <clears throat> uh, I would have the first and the last, and and he would have the the middle one, and. Uh, you know, that, that was suitable for us. Now, I have to say, too, that in addition to that, we had about 15 lay leaders. The, the, uh, the, the Protestant chaplain was a, a Lutheran. <clears throat> and um, you know, we had a Jewish lay leader. We had a Pentecostal lay leader. We had a... a um, Muslim lay leader. We had uh, a, a couple of um, uh, other denominations, and we, we facilitated their use of the chapel. 
Uh, so, because um, uh, for myself and the, the Protestant chaplain, we would be finished pretty, pretty much by noon, except when we were at seed. <clears throat> I had a, a vigil mass on Saturday, and then we had a late Sunday afternoon mass. Uh, but when we were at sea, we would go to uh, one or two of the support ships that were with us. Uh, we we uh, tried to do two or three, and, and just didn't work because well, the, the helicopter had to come get us, but the helicopter was on station in case there was an accident with the aircraft. So they were not always free, so we spent time waiting. So we uh, pared it down to one or two. <clears throat> um, and then after that, you went to senior officer's course in Newport, Rhode Island, right? Okay. Um, can you tell me a little bit about that? Um, it, it was uh, to um, prepare us for becoming senior chaplains. And uh, it, uh, it was uh, uh, one scholastic year from September to June. Uh, we had um, visiting professors. And there were, uh, uh, how many in the group? Uh, I think there were 20 of us. Uh, all at this time, either uh, commanders or uh, we had a Jewish lady, a Jewish uh, a rabbi who was still a lieutenant commander, but in the zone for commander. So we were all, most of us were cap uh, commanders at this time. And uh, <clears throat> uh, it was um, budgeting. Uh, um, uh, planning, um, you know, how to write na naval messages, uh, all, all the sorts of things that you would be expected to, to know if you were in command. <clears throat> and um, and you know, the, the days were regular class days. With, Start at eight in the morning, but finish three uh, or four o'clock in the afternoon. The evenings were free. Week weekends too, surprisingly, were free. Uh, mm -hmm. um, and then you did the Coast Guard Academy. Mm-hmm. And what were your duties there? Uh, I have to say that this would that. Coast Guard Academy was one of the highlights of my naval career, <laughs> the, the Coast Guard Academy. Uh, the, the, that's the only academy where the students get in on their own. It, there, there are no appointments. Uh, and uh, they were uh, all very bright. Uh, I remember the uh, commandant, not the commandant, the, yeah, the commandant of the, uh, of the academy saying to the students, Everybody here was in the top 10% of your class in high school. So for some of you, for the very first time in your life, you're going to be in the bottom of the class. <laughs> but don't let it throw you. Just remember, everybody here is super bright, or otherwise you wouldn't have gotten in. Um, <clears throat> uh, and uh, highly motivated. Uh, you know, the um, uh, Coast Guard says, we're the lifesavers. And, and and that's their that's their attitude. We're out there to save people. Um, said the uh, their life was very regimented, as you can expect. Uh, but uh, uh, I had a daily mass, and uh, there was usually a goodly number uh, there for mass. Uh, Wednesday evening, uh, I had a program. The Protestant chaplain had a program. And uh, uh, we could do some teaching at that time. And on Sunday evenings, I had a program saying, you know, ask the chaplain anything you want to, anything you want to know, just ask me, I'll tell you. So uh, uh, it was a very, very successful. And we had a, a retreat program called Teens Encounter Christ. 
uh, and it's a, a, a highly motivational weekend. It goes from Friday night to Sunday night. <clears throat> and um, it, it really uh, strengthened the, the faith of the uh, uh, cadets. Uh, by the time that I left, we had almost half of the, uh, the, the core had been through the program. And, uh, you know, Sunday morning I had uh, two masses. I had mass at 8 in the morning and 11. And we had a mass on Saturday night at um, five, 4 o'clock. Uh, very well attended. We had a good choir. And uh, uh, working with the cadets was, was really exciting because they, they were so bright and they were so eager. And... Uh, you know, come from the best families. So, um, I really enjoyed that. That's good. Um, and then from there you went to the Naval, uh, yeah. naval School? Naval, uh, I said Naval Schools Command, but it was Naval Support okay. Command. <clears throat> the, the chaplains, uh, I forgot how many chaplains there were. We, 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 we were all assigned uh, to um, the, the parent command. Under that, there were boot camp, and there were the school's command, and there, there were other commands. And we were assigned to the, the, the one command, and then the, the senior chaplain there would farm us out to the to different places. Like I said, I, I spent the, the, the time out there at boot camp. And at one time I had 10 chaplains working for me. So we had, uh, I don't know, 800 uh, boots there. You know, they, they come in for uh, eight weeks. And, uh, and then <clears throat> the... Uh, you know, some of them go out and stay there and go to a different school before they leave. But uh, Sunday morning was always uh, exciting because we'd have about 500 kids at Mass. <laughs> uh, yeah, and, uh, again, yeah, they were uh, enthusiastic. But the, uh, the, our, the biggest job there was to help them get away from home for the first time. Yeah, most of them had no problem, but the, the people we saw generally, that was the problem. You know, I miss home. Sure you do. But <laughs> you're here. <laughs> okay, I'll yeah, make the best of it. Yeah. <laughs> <clears throat> and we worked very closely there with the uh, the psychiatrist. Uh, and there, there was one time I went to him and I said, uh, you know, I, I sent you so-and-so and you sent him back. And uh, he said, yes. And I said, you, you know he's not going to make it. You know, why put him through this suffering? He said, our job is to help them graduate. If they're not going to graduate, they have to decide that. So, okay, well, you know he's not going to make it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and he didn't. Uh, 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 it, it, uh, but everybody who, who goes there, uh, the support is there to help them graduate. And you know, 95% graduate, 5% don't. Only only 1% of that, though, is because they can't adjust. The others, because uh, they were promised a school they can't have, or they had a deficiency that wasn't picked up at the medical examiner. But that's only four percent. Yeah. But the, uh, uh, the for me at that time, I was that's where I was when I was uh, uh, selected for captain. Uh, uh, and um, <clears throat> uh, uh, <laughs> having been to the command school or the the, the senior school, uh, it was a good preparation for me because I say at one time I had ten chaplains under me. What was it like being the head chaplain? Or? Uh, well, the, uh, with the, the men that I had or, uh, working with me, it, it was very easy. Uh, the, uh, 
It was very respectful of command of captain. <coughs> uh, and uh, they were uh, all younger men, you know, lieutenants. Uh, so, you know, we would get together and we would discuss what was going on and any problems, how can we help? Um, we uh, said they, on Sunday morning, uh, everybody would have a service somewhere. And uh, uh, it, it, was, it was a good op uh, opportunity for me and it was a good experience for me. And uh, we had a very senior man over over me. <laughs> so, um, so then after that, you uh, became the head chaplain at boot camp. That when, when I was at the Great Lakes, yeah. Okay. And um, what were some of your duties? There, just so that, that's what we were just talking about. Right. Okay. Yeah. Now, from from uh, Illinois, I went to the Bertram Marine Academy on Long Island. Okay. <clears throat> and that was another good experience. You know, uh, again, they're very, very bright people, highly motivated, but uh, very different because those who graduate from the Bertram Marine Academy are not necessarily going to go on active duty. When they, they graduate, it's the only academy that I know of where you can go and you can end up in the Air Force if you want. Because we had uh, uh, several, for the three years I was there, we had several who went into the Air Force. But they could go into any uniform um, uh, service, like NOAA, uh, public health, or any of the armed forces. Or that they could go into any business that was related to the maritime industry. So some of them actually did go to sea, but, but they, they were few because there are not that many opportunities anymore. Yeah, but they um, go into admiralty law, uh, admiral, uh, you know, uh, maritime insurance, anything that was related to the maritime industry they could go into. So their their attitude is slightly different from somebody like uh, at the other federal academies. Okay. <clears throat> um, and then and then from there you went to um, a different naval station. Yeah, it, Rota, Spain. Yeah, uh, but again, <laughs> so I said to you before, if, if I stay in for a, a career, how many times can I expect to have a real parish? That was the second one, and was the last one. Oh, okay. And uh, Roto was uh, wonderful to be in, uh, to be in Spain, uh, and to uh, we interacted with the Spanish uh, chaplains over there. And uh, we we had a, a good program there too. But it was myself and one other Catholic chaplain, and there were four Protestant chaplains. Uh, and again, you know, we alternated in the use of the chapel on Sunday. Again, we had the first mass and we had the last mass, and they had one in between. And we had a, an evening mass on Saturday. And. Uh, the, the, that assignment was somewhat similar to Greece, uh, where uh, uh, helping people accommodate themselves to a foreign country and uh, living uh, overseas. <clears throat> but uh, the difference uh, between Greece and, and Spain was most of the people in Spain were living on the base. Whereas in Greece, everybody was living off base. So for many of them, you know, it was just like another small American hometown. I mean, had, had movie theater, we had our church, we had our hospital, we had our stores. <laughs> they didn't want to meet a, a Spaniard, they didn't have to go out. 
uh, but uh, and and some of them didn't. They, you know, they never left the base, which was uh, criminal. But uh, there, I was able to travel. I, I had a lot of visitors while I was over there, and uh, so uh, and um, we we took the. Uh, uh, ladies at the chapel on a, on a couple of uh, excursions. So we got, I, I got to see a lot of, of, of Spain. Uh, but the, uh, for the, for the men uh, being over there, well, I, I can say that for, for the service member, because we had a lot of uh, female sailors too. Uh, most of them were there because they asked to be there. Not all of them, but most of them, and and they thoroughly enjoyed it. And just like uh, in uh, Greece, the Navy had um, uh, teachers to teach pe people Spanish if they wanted. I never got past the the, the, the fourth class. I tried twice, <clears throat> but it would start in September, and then by uh, November, you know, you're immersed in all kinds of programs. So I didn't learn any Spanish again. Yeah. Yes, uh, uh, but uh, it, it was w wonderful uh, there, and uh, as I say, I got to do a lot of traveling there. Okay. And in your years of service, did you um, go on any or leave while you were serving in Vietnam or anywhere afterwards? Did you get to go on leave anywhere? Uh, everybody in in uh, Vietnam. Uh, uh, got one week R and R, and uh, my mother flew over uh, to Honolulu, and I flew into Honolulu. Uh, we had a week together there, and we went back. And uh, when I was in um, uh, Greece, uh, she came over also, and uh, spent a couple of weeks over there. We were able to go up to Rome at the time, uh, but uh, yeah, I always took leave. And uh, when I was in Greece, uh, myself and the, the uh, other chaplain uh, spent a week on Mount Athos. You may be familiar with Athos, the only place in the world where women are not allowed, even today. <laughs> uh, it, uh, it's a, um, uh, a, a spine. Uh, if you look at the uh, map of Greece, uh, up in the northern Greece, there were three peninsulas that stick out, and Athos is, the, I think, the top one. Only monks are there, uh, and uh, we, we were able to sp spend time there. Uh, I was uh, able to go from a Athens down to uh, Holy Land for, uh, for um, a ten-day pilgrimage, and when I was in Spain, we took people down to the Holy Land also. And before I left Greece, uh, the, um, I, I spent a, a week uh, touring the Peloponnese. Yeah. Prior to that, I'd been to Delphi, I'd been to Thessaloniki, I'd been to Athos, I'd been to Meteora, uh, Corinth. But this time when we were done, the, the Peloponnese. It was great. Did you see any USO shows while you were? Uh, in Vietnam, uh, I, I, I forgot who it was. I can't even remember who it was. But we were, we, we uh, uh, as I say, one of my jobs was setting up tours. So we were very closely with the USO in Europe. And they were very, very helpful to us. <clears throat> Always have enough supplies. Oh yeah. yeah, but, yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, were you awarded any medals or citations? Um, at the end of my my first uh, assignment with, with mobile support unit, I, I was given the Navy Achievement Medal. Uh, when I left uh, Vietnam, I was given a Navy Commendation Medal. Uh, I was given the, the Coast Guard Commendation, uh, uh, commendation Medal when I left uh, 
uh, Coast Guard Academy. And then uh, when I was um, uh, leaving uh, Spain, uh, I was given a second uh, Navy Commendation Medal. So then, from Spain, you retired as captain. Mm-hmm. And what did you do after that? Uh, well, uh, the uh, Archbishop uh, allowed me to go to uh, Rome to study for three months when I got out. And when I came back, uh, he assigned me to the um, cathedral in Hartford, and I was there for uh, six months. And then I came to the Immaculate in Waterbury uh, and was there for uh, 24 years. And then I just retired in July. Okay. Um, how, how was the food while you were on ship or in service? It was always excellent. Uh, you know, Navy, Navy cooks are very good. Yeah. <coughs> I uh, said so the, the wardrobe is slightly different than the enlisted. The enlisted don't have any say in what they're going to eat, <laughs> and, but they don't have to pay for it either. As the wardroom, uh, the um, executive officer is always the president of the mess, and um, uh, he assigns somebody to work with the cooks to come up with a with a menu. So, um, uh, and those, uh, the, the first ships that I was on, as I say, in 18 months, I was on 31. On, on several of them, the XO would say, well, you're, you're our visitor, so you, you pick the menu for the week. <laughs> okay, all right. Uh, but the food was always good and, and always plentiful. Okay. Um, was there any particularly humorous events in your time? Hmm. None, none that come to mind. Okay. Um, did you uh, write home to your family? Oh yeah, uh, I would write once a week, and, and I would get a letter once a week. <coughs> the, uh, I, I'm not a, not a very good correspondent, <laughs> but uh, I would always make sure that my mother knew what was going on. And you said that your brothers um, were serving as well. Well, uh, uh, the brother just older than I uh, was uh, on active duty at the same time in the Air Force. And at that po time, you know, there was a policy to uh, blood brothers could not be in Vietnam at the same time. So, uh, let me see, where, where was he? He was in... Oh, he he was at uh, Fort Meade in, in Maryland at that when I was over there, and then uh, I came back, and within three or four months he was over there. <coughs> As, uh, he, he was uh, assigned to uh, the air, air base in Da Nang, so uh, but you know, asking about different areas that I knew because having been there. And uh, uh, it was recent enough so that uh, he could tell me. Right. Mm. Um, now, um, so you had already gone to school before you enlisted. Mm -hmm. um, do you keep in contact with any of the men that you served with? Uh, there's a, a family in New London that I'm very friendly with, <coughs> still, uh, and uh, there were uh, a, a couple of people down in that area from the academies uh, that I run into uh, whenever I'm down that way. And uh, there's a, um, a na another naval chaplain who was a priest from the Boston Diocese. Uh, that we're still friendly. Um, how did the military experience influence your thinking about war or the military in general? Uh, well, 
you know, the, the, uh, the people who are most against war are people who have been to war, because you can see how dehumanizing it is. Uh, so, you know, war is always uh, recognition of a mistake. Uh, but uh, I, I guess the realization of just how dehumanizing it is 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 the uh, the biggest lesson that I've learned. Uh, the Holy Father says you know, we all have to pray for peace, and we have to pray for peace. Did you join any veterans organizations? No. Um, how did uh, your service and experience affect your life overall? Uh, I, I guess the, the the biggest way is. Uh, uh, but, 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 uh, not to say regimentation, but um, planning and, and um, setting goals and, and achieving goals. I guess that, that that's it. Okay. Um, is there anything else that you would like to add that we do not cover? No, I, th I think you know, pretty much everything. Uh, I am very happy that I went in. <laughs> when the, when um, my brother first went into the Air Force, he was assigned to um, uh, Hokkaido, Japan, and it happened that the uh, Air Force chaplain there was a Waterburyan also. And when he came home, he he made a, uh, an effort to come and visit my mother. And say, you know, I saw your son George; he's doing fine. Blah 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 blah. Then <clears throat> he saw a picture of me in. Uh, my black suit and he said to my mother what about him is he going to go into service never <laughs> never say never but I am very glad that I went uh, the people I met as I, as I told you uh, good people and, and uh, they're you know, most of them highly moral and um, uh, good solid citizens and in the uh, necessity of living by a schedule was very helpful. Okay. Well, I would like to thank you for your service and for taking the time today to be interviewed. Well, thank you. It's been a pleasure.